Okay, so let's do uh, this question with refrigerant 22. Uh, so we know we have 25 pounds of it uh, at 80 PSI and 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And we know it's contained in a rigid container. Uh, also, there's a paddle wheel uh, in, in it that adds some energy with this torque of 0.15 BTUs uh, for 1200 revolutions. And then, so that's sort of the initial setup. The system is cooled to 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and we want to know the final internal energy. So it says U2, specific energy U2, and the overall heat, uh, whether the system lost or gained heat as a result. Um, okay, so uh, as we would do uh, first, we want to define the two states. Uh, and then whatever we don't, we cannot find, uh, then we will use the, uh, the first law of thermodynamics. And we will come back to the question itself to find out what we could do to uh, simplify the first law of thermodynamics. But initially, just, just so we're aware, we'll see what we have. We know for state one, uh, we know uh, the pressure is 80 PSI. We know the temperature is 150 Fahrenheit, uh, and we don't know the specific volume. And that's something we should probably find. Um, and then for state two, well, uh, the only thing that we know is that it is at temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So we probably should find this pressure and we probably should find this specific volume, okay? Uh, the other thing we know, we actually know the mass and the mass shouldn't change because it's a closed system. Uh, we know that it's 25 pounds, uh, pound mass. Okay, so um, before I go on to look at the tables, since refrigerant 22, that gives you, right away you should go to look at the tables. Uh, and obviously you, you don't know, there's no relationship, there's no equation that relates these things necessarily that we're aware of. Um, the one thing we should note here is that it is contained in a rigid container. And so whenever you see that word, I mean, I, 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 um, I wrote it in all caps, but I want you to kind of know this word. When you see rigid, that should trigger uh, that the volume does not change. So just think of a container as very rigid, like imagine uh, a reinforced balloon. And if you kept blowing air into it, it wouldn't change its volume. You, just, you can keep adding air to it. Uh, but it wouldn't change the volume. So uh, that means that whatever the volume in state number one is, it would be exactly the same in state number two. So I do know that, so we'll call this one, one, one. We know that volume two should be the same as the, as the first volume. So let's go ahead and try to find the initial volume, specific volume. So I'm going to go to the tables again, I'll show you the tables for refrigerant 22. Uh, and I want to use the uh, English system, not the SI system. And when I do that, uh, let me see. Uh, so I have a saturate. I, I have the option between saturated and superheated. And I know that I'm at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go look at the one that's got like nice increments of of temperature. I could not pressure because the pressure is pretty nice also. So I'm going to go here to 150. Uh, don't, I don't even have it. it goes to 140. Uh, and just to kind of convince you, if you go to the other one where it's in increments of pressure, uh, the pressure is 80 psi. So I'm going to go down here to 80. So here is 80 psi. And when you look at 80 psi, the corresponding temperature is 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So neither one of those tables uh, is valid or usable for our case. Okay. So that means since I don't have a liquid type thing going on for refrigerant 22, I don't have a liquid table, I have to use a superheated uh, table for it. So I'm gonna go to, to refrigerant 22 uh, and I'm going to look at uh, let's see, a pressure of 80, I know. So this one is for pressure of 5, 10, 15, 20, et cetera. I'm going to go look for the 80. Um, and it is right here at the, the bottom, this guy here. And I need a temperature of 150 
So I actually oh, I can't really see it well. It's right here as the last thing. So I know that the specific volume here in foot cube per pound is 0.8953. Can't really see. It's really hard to focus, but it's just this last entry here. This is 150, 80 psi. And so it says 0.8953. So I'm going to copy that over. And I also know that I also have the internal energy because because I'm asked for the second internal energy. I'm going to write it down anyway because I need it. Um, okay. And, and I might need it if we're using the first law. So I'm just going to copy those two entries down to the um, here what we have for the for the initial for the initial state. So I know from that table that U one is 114.46. Uh, and it is, oops, it's a six, BTU per pound mass. And I also know that the specific volume for this thing is 0.8953 uh, foot cube per pound. And as we said, this is the same here. So since I know V1, I also know V2. So again, this is 0.8. 953 foot cubed per pound mass. Obviously, mass is the same, 25 pounds. Um, I also need to know U2. I don't have that. Okay. So I'm going to look for U2. Uh, and we'll try to find that. That's one of our questions here. And we also want to know this, the total heat. Okay. How do I find the U2? Probably the best thing to do is to use the tables because now I have two, two variables that I can play with. So I know I, I have a specific temperature to, to look at, as well as an actual specific volume of 0.8953. So what I can do is, again, I have these two options, the superheated and the saturated. So I'm going to bring that to the table. So I know from the, that what I just wrote that the temperature has got to be 40 and that the volume has got to be 0.8953. Okay, so I'm going to look around here, it's sort of like a trial and error, kind of try and find a place where 40 exists and see what happens um, at the 0.8953. If you go to pressures higher than 90, uh, so like over here at 100, you could see that the temperatures, the lowest temperature is 60 here, it's 80 here, it's 100. Uh, so I'm not going to go at higher pressures. I'm going to try to go for lower pressures. So let's say, for example, I'm just going to uh, take a stab at it. Here, this pressure of 40 psi. If I look at a temperature of 40, which I know I, I'm at, the volume is 1.4678. So that's not good. And I'm gonna just gonna like gloss around and see what it what it would be for the other ones. Here at 40, it's 0.94. Um, here at 40, it's 0.79. Again, I'm, we're trying to look for 0.89. So um, so then that, that means it's probably between these two values as you could see. So what I could do is I can try to interpolate where it would be here to try to find uh, the actual pressure if I were interested in that. Okay. Um, and I am interested in that. That would be pretty good for, 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 for us. <clears throat> uh, so Okay, so so again, what I'm going to do is we're going to let's let's extrapolate uh, here between these two values to get the pressure. Okay, so I know let's see here when the temperature that I'm I'm going to write that here from from the table. I know that when for state, it's this is state two. Um, we'll try to extrapolate because we don't know the actual pressure, and then we will use the pressure to find the U. So I know that when P is equal to sixty pound uh, psi, okay, I know that my volume is 0 0.9485 uh, pound uh, foot cube per pound. And I also know that when the pressure is 70, uh, I know that the specific volume 
uh, will be 0.7994. Okay, uh, flip cube per pound mass. And what we're after is we know that it's somewhere in between. We want to know P, uh, so it's somewhere between 60 and 70. What should that be uh, when the volume is 0.8953? Because we know that that's correct. So it's, it's going to be uh, flip cube per pound mass. You know it's going to be probably closer to 60 because uh, because of the, the way it is. Again, what we're doing is we're going to set up a straight line. We're going to use the point slope formula pretty much to try to find this this uh, this point that's somewhere in, in between. Okay. So what what I know, uh, we'll call this P, let's call this one P B, P A, V B, V A. And so, and this is what we know. So if I if I'm looking, so is at the, at the it, I could do it either way. P minus P A uh, divided by V B minus V A, okay, is going to be equal to V bar. I am sorry, P minus P A divided by P B minus P A. Sorry. So what you do, you always you go for the one you don't know, subtract one of them, and uh, divide by the range. Uh, that's going to be equal to the one that you don't know, the point that you don't know, but we we know one of the coordinates for that point minus V bar A divided by that range. V bar B minus V bar A. Okay. So in that case, we're going to put in the actual values. Uh, one second. We're going to put in the actual values and see what we get. So in our case, we're trying to find the P. Um, let's put it here. So I'm going to omit the units and just put the numbers. So we don't know P, that's what we're after. P minus PA would be 70 divided by 60 minus 70 uh, is going to be equal to V bar minus the corresponding volume for that. So for 70, it's 0.7994. And you divide by that range, point, um, VB minus VA, 0.9485 minus 0.7994. Minus 0.7994. Okay, and you punch that into the calculator and you find that the pressure is 63.6 psi. Okay, um, and again, this volume we do know, we we're looking for that pressure, we don't know this volume is uh, missing 0.8953. Okay. So now that we know the pressure, I'm gonna I'm gonna write that down. So up here, we you actually know the pressure. We don't actually really need it explicitly, but we do need it implicitly, 63.6 psi, because we want to find u. Okay, how does that help us? Let me show you with the table. Um, again, so we will be, we'll do another interpolation to get the u. Okay, so now go here. Um, and so now I know the, the midpoint pressure, which is nice. Um, I could use the pressure or I could use the volume. I could, I could repeat the thing. Um, but I know that between at, this, at, at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, at the constant of 40 degrees Fahrenheit here, that uh, the, the, these two Vs exist. We know the midpoint V. Uh, now we're after the midpoint uh, U. Okay, so I know that at this point, the U is 99.16. At this point, it's 98.71. I want to know um, at the pressure of 63.6 uh, or at the volume of 0.8953, what is the, what is the U? So I have, I have two ways of, of doing that. I could, easy, I could either use the pressure to derive that U or I could use the volume to derive that U. 
So again, I'm going to write down these two U values, 99.16 and 98.71, that correspond to 40 degrees Fahrenheit at the two pressures. So I know that, so I know that at P is equal to 60 PSI, um, I know that my specific volume here, sorry, specific internal energy is 97.75 BTU uh, per pound mass. And I also know, so this is unrelated to these, that at pressure of 70 PSIA, uh, that the specific internal energy is uh, 98.71. And um, I just miswrote something. One second. This is not 97.75. I wrote it wrong. This is actually 99.16. I am sorry. So at 60, I have 99.16. At 70, I have 98.71 for the specific internal energy. Okay. And I'm um, after what happens when the pressure is 63.6. Okay. I want to know what the U here would be. And this ends up being U2, which is what we're after. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do another interpolation. And uh, we'll do that. Well, I'm gonna pick the pressure as a way to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna say, uh, so I know this mid pressure, we'll call this one PA, PB, UA, UB, and we're looking for P2, uh, sorry, U2, so when we have P2. So I know from interpolation that P2 minus PA divided by PB minus PA will give me U2 minus UA divided by UB minus UA. Again, you're gonna peg the point that you don't know here and you're gonna use the entire range of what you do know as the denominators um, and one of the points um, uh, over, over there. Uh, and you can, you can, I could have done PB and UB here, that's okay. It would give me the same thing. So uh, this is P, just is P2. Okay, so I'm gonna just put in the values just to show you, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna punch in the calculator and see what we get. So I'm gonna omit the units just, just so you can see the numbers that I'm gonna use. Uh, so P2, is what, what is what is the point that we don't know, but we do know the P. So it's 63.6 minus 60 divided by this range, 70 to 60. Okay, and that's going to be equal to U2, which is what we want, because that corresponds to 63.6 uh, minus UA, which corresponds to PA, this is PA, this is UA, so it's gonna be 99.16, and all of this divided by the range of the internal energy. So it'll be 98.71 minus 99.16, and when we punch it in, uh, we will get a U2 of, uh, we get U2 of 98.998, so I'm gonna call it 99. 99.0 um, BTU uh, per pound mass. Okay. So so that that's that. So we have the U2 as well. So that's that's what we're after. Now we have it. So that that answers part A. U2 is 99. Okay, so now that defined our system. Uh, we're done with interpolation. Um, for this question. Great. So now that we figured out the U, uh, that's great because we will need it. Uh, we need to find out the Q. Okay. Q will not be, uh, you can't get that from the table. Uh, so you probably need to use the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, and let's, let's try it. Well, let's write it in all its glory, assuming no kinetic energy, no potential energy. Um, it's just delta U is equal to uh, Q minus the work, okay? Uh, and as far as work is concerned, uh, we traditionally use expansion and contraction work, but if you look here, expansion contraction, right, which is equal to 
PdV. If the volume stays constant, then dV is zero and there's no work, but there is a paddle wheel. So we need to account for that. The paddle wheel uh, will have shaft work and we need to put shaft work into it. So for our specific case, the only form of work in this question is shaft work, shaft, okay? And um, we will calculate that and we'll find Q. That's what we're after, okay? So delta U, big U, will be the mass times the change in internal energy. So M for the mass times delta little u, okay? That's gonna be equal to Q, which is what we want. So we have delta U, we have M, it's good. We don't know Q, minus the work, the shaft work. And to remind you as far as, uh, as, far as shaft work is concerned, it's the torque times two pi uh, times the number of revolutions. So it's going to be torque times two pi times n, where little n is the number of revolutions. Two pi is the fact that it's going around a circle and uh, tau is the torque. Okay, so now I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna use all the values that I have, make sure that all the units are corresponding. Uh, so M is 25 pounds pound mass, uh, delta U is this minus this. So it's 99 minus 114.46 BTU per pound mass. Okay, and we don't know Q and we have the tau that's 0.15 BTU times two pi, that's the unitless thing. Um, and then N is also unitless, uh, and that gives us BTU. This gives us BTU, so we're good. Uh, this N is number of revolutions, and we know from the questions, if you look, if you read it again, uh, that the paddle wheel adds energy at, uh, this is the torque it gives for 1200 revolutions. Okay, so I have 1200 here. Okay, so 1200 revolutions, again, that's unitless. So I'm gonna get BTU and BTU, and, and we're good. So we're gonna punch all of this in. And we get that Q, uh, I'll move it down a second. Um, when you punch it in, Q is 744.4 BTU. So here you can't see this thing, it says Q. Q is equal to 744.4 BTU. 